Now that we understand the definition of disjoint, it's time for us to put it into practice for our first probability rule. Probability rule number one is the addition rule for disjoint events. Now the probability rules are listed out for you on your exam notes packet. So if you look at your exam notes packet, there they are, the five probability rules that we're going to use and focus on. Okay, so we're looking right now at probability rule number one, and you'll notice it has the word disjoint right in there. Hmm. Okay, what does this say? It says if you want the probability of E or F, and E and F are two disjoint or mutually exclusive events, then you take the probability of E and add to it the probability of F. Simple as that. So let's look at an example. All right, we have our card deck again. You're going to draw a single card from a standard 52 card deck. Let Q be drawing a queen, funnily enough, right? So let Q equal queen over here in this ring and A be an ace card. Oh my goodness, okay. So what's over here is the queen of hearts, the queen of spades, the queen of diamonds, and the queen of clubs. Hearts, spades, diamonds, and clubs all have different letters, so that works out great for me. And then here you have the ace of hearts, the ace of spades, the ace of diamonds, and the ace of clubs. So there are your two groups. Now the sample space is everything, so you do have to write out in the box all the other things. So we want, let me think, two through jack and the king. So we want two through jack and king of hearts, two through jack and the king of spades. Oh, I'm running out of space up there. I'll put it down here. Two through jack and the king, whoop, and the king of diamonds, and two through jack, so two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, and the king of of clubs. All right, so we have all those other cards out there. There's 52 cards total. All right, what is the probability of Q? All right, so getting a queen, there's four queen cards out of 52 cards total in the sample space. Remember, the box is your sample space. Right? And the probability of ace is also four out of 52. So what's the probability of both? Now, this is a little bit sneaky. When we say and in probability, what that means is both at the same time. Well, that would be zero because that's impossible. You cannot be both a queen and an ace. You're either a queen or you're an ace, but you cannot be both, right? So and means both at the same time. Better write it down. It's a little note to ourselves. So what does or mean? Well, or means either one or the other, right? So it's either one or the other. Or technically both, but both was impossible for this particular one. But I will mention or both, even though both was not actually possible in this particular case. All right, so, well, the probability of a queen is 4 out of 52. Matter of fact, I'm just going to write it this way. This is, according to rule number one, it's the probability of queen plus the probability of ace, which is 4 out of 52 plus 4 out of 52, right? That's what the general, or excuse me, the addition rule for disjoint events says. You can just add, right? If you want the probability of queen or ace, you take the probability of queen plus the probability of ace. They're disjoint, so you just add them up. And this is where fractions are convenient. Remember how I mentioned a long time ago, there are times when actually fractions are more convenient for us. This is one of those times. They have the same denominator, so you just add the numerators. So 4 plus 4 is 8. So it's 8 over 52. I'm not particularly interested in reducing it down. Um, if you want to reduce it down, you can. One, you could come up with a decimal. Whoops, 8 divided by 52. Fine. Um, you can also make a fraction of it by hitting the math button 
and then hitting number one. See number one, convert to fraction, and it'll change it to a reduced fraction, which is two out of 13. Again, I don't particularly care about it, um, but if, if you want to know how to do it, that's how to do it. In Desmos, it's even easier because in Desmos, if you type eight divided by 52, and you see over here in this little left button, it has a little fraction thing. You just click on that and it turns from a decimal to a fraction to a decimal to a fraction. <laughs> Simple as that. So it's two out of 13 right there. So, so be it. Again, not strictly required. Only required if it asks you for a reduced fraction. So if it asks you for that, you can find it using technology, which is one of the reasons I don't usually stress it very often, because if we can use technology to do it, then it's not really that big of a deal for us.